to none. A one, hit him with the A one song. Since day one, not the A one side. Lucy, Emmett, did you draw stubble dots on your face? What? No. <laughs> So the first film completely caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it, but it knocked me off my feet. I loved it. It was one of the best films of 2014, in my opinion. So let's see how part two turned out. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the Lego movie to the second part. I really do appreciate it. Now, I'll just go ahead and say off the top, the title of this film is like the best thing in the world to me. I really do love it. It's one of the best things that I do love about the movie. It's just so on the nose. It's so self-aware. And that's kind of what makes this Lego movie franchise uh, stand out to me so much is this really just don't care. They're really unapologetic about everything. Now, in my intro, I said that I, you know, I have the Lego movie right here. Uh, on blu-ray got it like right when it was released like i remember like the first day because i love the movie so much it, it blew me away you can go check out my review for that it's on my channel from like four years ago but for some reason when the uh marketing material for this to start pushing out all the promotions and stuff i just wasn't excited about the lego movie part two i, I don't understand it doesn't make sense why you would love of the first film so much but just the second one wasn't doing that much for me now, I'm not sure if this is because I knew, you know, going in and leading up to the film that Phil Lord and Christopher Miller aren't directing the film anymore. Uh, they are still a part of the project. They are writing it. But we have somebody new by the name of Mike Mitchell. And when I looked at his filmography, he has been behind a few films that I know. Uh, Sky High, which came out in 2005. I really did enjoy that film. It, it was, you know, it was cute for what it was back in the day. Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo and Shrek uh forever after so i was kind of so so i like sky high but you know i really did not know what to expect going into this but one thing i do like about the lego movie to the second park is par the second part is it picks up literally where the first one leaves off so and i don't even think that you have to see the first film to uh, necessarily understand what's going on it's very easy to follow of course we have elizabeth banks as the uh what, what is the name dj wild style or something like that yeah that is under your wild style of course we have chris Pratt uh, back as well and they, they both are, are great characters uh, in this Lego movie franchise what I love about Chris Pratt, Pratt what he did in the first one and in the second one here is that he's just so naive and innocent um, I don't know that just does something for me I'm able to attach myself to characters like that you know he just wants love and everything to be awesome and why it can be annoying and just kind of you like hey hey dude snap out of it wake up you know it's just something charming about his character that I really did love uh, as far as all the jokes are concerned in this film, it is funny. You're going to laugh. You're not going to laugh as much as you did in the first film or um, I at least different or I at least did not. Uh, what makes the Lego movie great, like I said just before, is that it is self-aware. This film is Legos. Children play with Legos. I don't know of any adults that, well, many adults may, but not that many. I think more children play with Legos uh, than um I think more children play with Legos than adults do. But at the same time, the Lego movie had a ton of adult themed jokes in the first one. And they do in the second part as well. They're not as prominent as they are in the first film. And that's why this film is a little lacking as far as that's concerned compared to the first. But they are still there. So if you're watching this and you have children, and you're kind of worried like, oh, my gosh, is this for me? Should I drop my kids off and go to the mall or do some shopping pay bills? Or can I sit with them through this? Will I? Will it make sense to me? Well, I understand. Put all those uh, worries aside. This uh, has um, a lot for you if you're an adult and children, too. So I think both parties, uh, you know, will have a good time. Now, I talked about Elizabeth Banks and Chris Pratt. One of the newer cast members that we have in this film is Tiffany Haddish. Um, I didn't even know that she was part of the movie until I was seeing the movie. And when I first heard her voice, I was re really, really annoyed because I'm just kind of so and so with Tiffany Haddish. I did not like Girls Trip, but I liked her in high school. Um, but the, her last film, Nobody's Fool, I thought it was just absolutely atrocious. So when I heard her voice in this film, I did get a little disappointed. Uh, her character is being played. Uh, the character name is Queen Whatever Wannabe. I thought that was very clever. And I actually liked 
Tiffany Haddish's role in this film. Um, it was actually um, one of the best parts of the film. It, it was funny. Uh, she can actually sing a little bit. I don't know how much uh, um, help she got in the effects room in post production, but you know she was entertaining. She it, it wasn't annoying or anything like that. And just about the singing itself, that is one of the things that I liked about this film uh, the most. Uh, it be, well one it being self aware in the adult themed jokes. But also the sing-alongs now and them just busting out into a musical. Now, initially, the first five seconds that every time they were about to bust into a song or sing along in this film, the first five seconds, I was like a little annoyed, like, oh, my gosh. OK, can we please fast forward through this? But when that six second came, it's like something just snapped in my mind and I was just on tune with it. You know what I'm saying? It was catchy. You know, it, it was just kind of hard not to recite the songs and sing along with the characters. And you just kind of sing, you know, find this self kind of just singing and dancing swimming back and forth acknowledging to yourself man this is just so silly and it doesn't make sense but it is a lot of fun and i think that's the main part that um you know we all go to the movies we just want to have fun now something that the first film was able to do that the lego movie part two the second part was not a uh, lego movie two the second part was not able to do is the, the illusion of legos now i don't know if it's just because of my uh you know i did a little more research this time but in the first lego movie of course they it wasn't stop motion they didn't just use lego blocks and you know uh you know take a photograph move it a little bit take another photograph no they use you know computer uh generated you know imagery images to make this work uh but it looked like it was real legos in the first one throughout the whole thing or at least to me in the second one it, it you just didn't have that fluidity there um it didn't look bad but you know you can tell that you know it, it this wasn't like a photorealistic shot or whatever when you think about it okay how realistic is that you know but um, it, it's just something that I noticed. Now, as far as the story is concerned and the flow, um, everything started out great. Everything ended great. In the middle of it where uh, Emmett, our hero, goes to meet someone else, another character that's kind of far, far away. Uh, it kind of, you know, like just sumps down just a little bit. Just, you know, it, it's just not as good. You're, you're wanting the film to get back to all the good, all the gusto, you know. Um, but it, it's just kind of it's kind of like a, just a downer moment for a good 20 to 25, maybe even 30 minutes. And this film clocks in at about two hours. Um, if I'm as yet, yeah, well, a little under one hour and 46 minutes. So I don't want to say 30 minutes. I'll say maybe about 20 minutes or so that, you know, things just was not popping you know out at me you know like i wanted it to but as far as everything else uh is concerned i really did enjoy um everything that this film um you know had to deliver the jokes are there they're a little bit scattered like i said you're not going to laugh out loud as much as you did on the first film but you still will laugh and i, I think that's the whole point of going to the movies at the end of the first film, uh, we know that Will Ferrell is a part of the film, and I like the way that they tied this Lego computerized world in with the real world. They did that here in uh, part two, and I think they did that better than they did in the first film. So that is one thing that, uh, you know, you could take away is that, you know, they infused that with the real world much better uh, than the first film. And also just the icing on the cake, the cherry on top is just kind of like the moral of the story. Sometime in life, you really have to look in the mirror. You really have to see self-evaluate and have that self-reflection and make sure that you are being the most constructive person you can be instead of the most non-constructive uh person and that was kind of the moral of the story like okay while you think you're doing good you may actually be doing bad you may actually be doing you know uh damage to a situation that you're supposed to be improving and that's just something that just really really stood out to me is you know when people think that they're the good guy but they are really the bad guy and uh you know i'll just go ahead and say the very very end of this you know it was, it was uh, really touching. Initially, I was going to give this film an 8. But if I were to rate the Lego Movie 2, the second part out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen the Lego Movie 2, the second part, or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing links to all that good stuff down in the description. 
description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the Lego Movie 2, the second part. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.